which writing software program should I use? That's a question I get asked often by beginning writers or see posed in a lot of the social media groups that I'm in for authors. And I get it because writing a book is hard enough. You certainly don't need your writing program causing you headaches or making your output difficult or getting in the way of the drafting process. It's actually a question that used to be a lot easier to answer because there didn't used to be as many options, but that's changed a lot in the last few years. There are a lot of writing programs and software that you can use. So in this video, we're gonna break down three that I recommend, talk about some of their pros and cons, and help you pick the one that's right for you. Before we start looking at specific writing programs, let's talk for just a minute in broad terms about what a good writing software program should do for you. What features should you be looking for, aside from obviously just you know typing words, which if that's all we needed, we could just use a word processor. But there are other things available that you wanna include and make sure are a part of the writing program that you choose. The first is that a good writing software program should help you to organize and keep track of all of the supplementary material for your story. So that would be features like letting you develop scene cards or character profiles, letting you keep track of and organize your research or your setting notes. As you begin developing out your story, there's a lot of things that don't fit into a chapter or a scene that you want to be able to keep track of and reference so that you it makes it a lot easier to not make mistakes like saying your character's eyes are green in one scene and then 10 chapters later you mention that they're blue. There are writing programs that do a really good job of this, but a word processor doesn't. So any writing program that you pick, you should make sure that it at least includes some of those helpful features. Because I can tell you from experience, that's really useful for any writing that you're going to do for a book. But especially if you begin writing a series, that becomes really essential. I have a standard template that I've created for my Far Shore Chronicles series that has a whole kind of bibliography section in it that before I even begin writing the first chapter of a new book, it, I have a point of reference for all the major characters and terminology, the major ideas, the places and the races. It's a fantasy story. So all that stuff, anything that I have developed in a previous book winds up in my bibliography. And then when I start writing a new book, I have all that information to hand. So if I need to go back and look something up or remember what I had called something or remember, you know, what a character's favorite meal is or whatever, I have all of that information available to me. And as you begin developing a multi-book series over months or years of writing, that can become really, really important. The second thing you want to make sure your writing software choice will do for you is make the process of formatting and exporting your manuscript as a finished book file when you're done writing it as easy and effective as possible. That's something you might not necessarily think of if you haven't finished a book or two already, but let me tell you, man, it will save you so much time and headache down the road. Once you have the words of your story done, you need to get it into the formats and devices that your readers are going to actually consume it in. So that means ebook formatting, that might mean print formatting and exporting. All of those things, if you only are writing in a word processor, are going to be time consuming and frustrating and really, really hard. Um, you, There are people who actually you can pay to do that stuff for you. But if you use a writing program that has those features embedded in it automatically, when you're finished, you can just say, give me my EPUB file or give me this print ready PDF and let me go through and see what the format or the layout is going to be. What are my bleed margins? What are my trim sizes? All that other kind of stuff. And it saves you so much hassle and makes it that much easier when you're finally done writing the book to get it out there to your readers. So it's definitely something you want to consider when you're looking for a writing software program. The third and final thing that I think all writing software programs should do is make saving and storing, organizing, and transferring your files as easy and safe and consistent as possible. I cannot tell you the number of nightmare stories I have heard from friends where months or even years of hard work are lost because a hard drive got corrupted or they thought something was in Dropbox or their storage limit was overloaded and then something didn't back up when they thought it was going to or they lost the backup drive or whatever. You're putting your heart and soul into your books and you want to make sure that every word you write is saved as soon as possible. Some writing programs are better at this than others and we'll talk about that when we get to our specific suggestions. But in every case, 
Why not take advantage of a program that is going to help you in saving and storing and organizing your files, especially if when you begin writing multiple books, again, maybe in a series or different standalone entries over time, you want to be able to find something you wrote four years ago or five years ago. You want to be able to keep track of the versions because you'll come back maybe and you'll do some editing and then you want to track that like this is the most current version of that file or this is the print version of that file or whatever. So making sure that your writing software program helps make your job of saving and storing and organizing your files, especially if possible, automatically as you go so that you don't have a brain fart and then forget to back up your files and then, you know, oops, your bag falls out of the car and your laptop is broken or and you lose your hard drive or whatever. You want to try and save yourself from that as much as possible. So finding a software program that helps you with that is a really good idea. So with those general features out of the way, we're ready to start taking a look at the specific writing programs that I'm going to recommend to you and take a look at some of their pros and cons. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, if you're finding the information helpful, please take a minute to hit the like button to help other people find it as well. And consider subscribing to the channel for more writing and storytelling content to come. So the first writing program that I will recommend to you is Scrivener. Scrivener is probably the most well-known of all of the various writing software because it's been around for a while and a lot of authors use it for good reason. It, it does most of the three things that I uh, mentioned as being important and we'll get, get to each of those in a moment. But let's talk first about some of the pros of the Scrivener program. So the first pro is that Scrivener has probably the most complete and comprehensive suite of tools available. It can do so many interesting things as far as like tracking when certain characters show up in scenes, color coding, keywording. Um, there's a whole host of different features and things that it can do beyond just the writing of the words. I, I have always really liked the way that it organizes the files in the binder um, so that you can drag and drop and move things around really easily or keep files in a folder related to a scene that aren't actually included in the scene. So I often will have in every single scene that I write, I'll have the scene text, but then I'll have a separate file that is editing notes. And that's where I keep track of things that I want to do to the scene in revisions when I get back to it. And it's really a powerful toolkit um, to help you plan and organize, especially longer manuscripts as you work on them. Another pro is that it has pretty good um, formatting and exporting features. So when you're done writing your book in Scrivener, it takes a little bit of learning curve to understand all of the settings to get the export that you want. But again, because of all of those dynamics, you can get really fine tuned in exactly how you want your files exported into different file formats and structures. So once you're finished, you don't need to find a different program to create the files that you need to be able to go and publish your book. The third pro of Scrivener, and I actually think it's a really big one, is that the program itself is only a one-time purchase. Um, I think it is still currently about $50. Uh, as opposed to a subscription, which some of the other powerful software solutions, which we'll talk about in a minute, actually have more of a subscription model. So I really like the fact that you can just, if you need to save for it, you can buy it. Once you buy it, you have it. You don't have to keep paying for it. Um, and that can be a big deal if you're on a bit of a budget. But with the pros out of the way, let's talk about a few cons because Scrivener definitely does have some negative points and some friction points that you have to be aware of if you're going to decide to use it. Full disclosure, I have used Scrivener for years, but I am definitely considering this year making the switch to a different platform for some of these reasons. The first con of Scrivener is for all of its powerful features and everything that it can do, it has a really big learning curve. Using those features is not necessarily intuitive. In fact, there are a whole lot of YouTube videos and blog articles about how to use Scrivener and how to learn Scrivener. There are courses on how to learn Scrivener, which on one hand is a good thing because the resources are there, but on the other hand, um, it kind of sucks that there, you need to go through a whole course just to learn how to use this program. But especially if you want to use more of its advanced and powerful features, expect a big learning curve and a few moments of frustration going, wait a minute, why is it when I click on this, like this thing happens over here or doesn't happen over here? And that is also especially true of the formatting. Like it take, took me a while to figure out how to get the final versions of the files exported looking the way that I wanted them to look within all the formatting and exporting set settings that are available. So yes, it has a lot of features, but those features come with a pretty steep learning curve. The second big con of Scrivener, though, is I think in some ways the 
more problematic. I mean, a learning curve is a learning curve. Uh, I have figured out how to utilize all of the features of Scrivener that I care about, and yeah, there are features I don't use, but so far I haven't minded that, and it's worked well for me to write the books that I have written and published so far. So yeah, it's a problem, but it's a solvable problem. The second issue with Scrivener, though, is that it doesn't have uh, it's not a native web app, like it's a program you install on your Mac or your PC. Um, and so because it, it's not a native web app and it doesn't have automatic cloud syncing and cloud storage, say, you have to save and transfer and backup all your files manually. I've had to really get good at remembering and I'm still not great at it. And then I realized like, oh my gosh, it's been months since I've backed up my files. I've just been writing and yeah, they're saved in my folders on my hard drive, but that's not a great idea because stuff goes wrong. Um, and that would, man, if I lost months of working on a manuscript, that would be pretty heartbreaking. And I have friends that that has happened to. So that's something you need to keep in mind if you're going to decide to use Scrivener. Yes, it's powerful. Yes, it has a lot of features. And in some ways, because it's been around and it's more popular, there are a lot of helpful people and guides and forums and things that you can use to figure out how to use it. But at least as of now, it, it has no native web support. And so you're going to have to develop your own habits and your own consistency for saving and backing up and storing your files. So in light of some of those cons, let's take a look at our second software solution, which I'm going to recommend to you. And actually, I'm bringing you for this one two different platforms for the price of one. Well, not actually for the price of one, like you have to pay for them separately. You get what I mean. Two different programs, and I'm bringing you two programs because they broadly do more or less the exact same set of things, and that is Living Writer and Novelpad. So Living Writer and Novelpad are both a cloud-based, web-based software solutions, which is really their first big pro. Because of that, they have pretty much word for word auto saving features where um, everything that you're writing is being saved and stored to the cloud as you go. And you don't have to remember to do that for yourself, which is a huge peace of mind and quality of life improvement. And is one of the big reasons why I am considering possibly making the switch to one or of these options this year. Another thing that I really like about them is because they're both newer solutions, their user interface is a lot more intuitive. They have most, if not all, of the same kinds of robust organizational features that Scrivener offers. So scene and title cards, character profiles, research notes, a lot of other really cool things. But all those features are, are developed and presented in a more intuitive way, which makes it a lot easier and more instinctive to use. And I think uh, presents a little bit less of a barrier to entry and learning curve to get up to speed with using all of their tools and features. Last thing I'll mention is because they are web-based and uh, are more automatically cloud accessed. Both of them have some really nice collaborative tools. I have actually co-written a book series with an author friend of mine in Scrivener, and I will tell you it was a pain. Um, having to like email each other the right files or keep them in Dropbox, and then like it, it was a hassle. So um, if you are ever planning to do any collaborative writing or editing, like being able to invite your editor when you hire an editor to work with you on revising and improving your manuscript draft, um, being able to invite them to do it in a non-destructive way in in your cloud solution where you can see the changes that they're making and recommending and everything again is saved and updated automatically is a really really big time and quality of life improvement overall so with all of those pros what's the cons well there's really only one honestly that i can recommend but it may be a big one and that's the fact that both of them are subscription-based platforms um, so you're going to be paying for them pretty much permanently for as long as you want to use them which it does suck like I like the fact that with Scrivener, you can just, you know how much it's going to cost and you just buy it. And even if you go with the annual option for those, you're still going to be getting billed annually. So they are quite a bit more expensive. And over the long haul of multiple years, there's quite a bit more expensive. So that is definitely something that you need to keep in mind and factor into your decision making if you do decide to go with um, either of those options. They both have um, a reasonable period of a free trial. So um, you can take a look at them, sign up for the, the free trial and try it out for a little while. And that should hopefully help you decide if the features that they offer are worth the price for you. So with Scrivener on the one side and a cloud-based solution like Living Writer or Novelpad on the other, for my third suggestion, I want to point your attention to possibly a middle ground option that might be a great fit um, kind of mixing some of the best of both worlds. And that is using Readsy's book editor. So Readsy's book editor is also a cloud-based, browser-based editing program. 
Um, but the main difference between it and the two that I mentioned previously is that it is free, and Readsy claims that they're planning to keep it free forever. So that's a pretty big deal, um, being able to use a free online writing program. Uh, it has, because it is cloud-based, it does some of the same things of you know, automatic saving and, and collaborative editing, which can be really, really great. And because Readsy as a company or as a platform is really, really focused on um, publishing support, its formatting and output is excellent. I think it's probably the best of all of the ones that we've mentioned so far in terms of being able to customize the format outputs that you need depending on which, like, print, which specific online print-on-demand solution you're going with or where you're going to be uploading your e-files and things like that. So it, those features, uh, it does do extremely well, and the fact that it's free is obviously really, really nice. Its main downside is that it is missing some of the more fancy or more advanced organizational tools that some of the other programs has. Um, it, it does do a decent job of, you know, letting you keep track of your chapters and your back matter and, you know, you can create files for things, but it, it doesn't have it natively built in to quite the same extent to do like character profiles or keep your research notes or some of the things that we have talked about already. Um, you can do it a bit, but it, it doesn't do it to the same extent as something like Novelpad would do. It doesn't have all of those same features. It's a little bit more um, bare bones and distraction free, which again can be a good thing depending on what it is you're looking for. So with those three recommendations or four recommendations out of the way, I will say I think the most important thing is to find a program that gets out of your way and doesn't cause you added hiccups or friction or frustration as you are working on your writing. I highly recommend that if you are working on a book that you choose a program that is designed to support you in doing that and don't just write in a word processor um, because there's no reason really not to. I mean, at the very least, I would absolutely use Readsy's book editor over a word processor because it is free, um, but some of those extra features that we've already mentioned will make your life a lot easier both as you're writing your book and once you're finished and you're ready to begin formatting and exporting and publishing your book. So let me know in the comments as you take a look at those three, which one stands out to you? Which one did you decide to use? Is there a different program you're aware of or that you've used before that you think would be a good recommendation? Drop that in the comments as well. And until next time, I wish you a year of great writing productivity.